Right now it is time for This Week in the Lakeville Journal, and hopefully we have Janet and John. Janet and John, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Good morning. It's I, you know, I, I fat fingered your number when I dialed it, Janet, and every once in a while, you know, it doesn't give you the number that it doesn't give you the number that you think you dialed, and that's. that's I like the verb fat finger. I know. That, that that can happen, but that's, not this time. That's why I was a li- I was just a little worried about that. All right, so let us go. Yeah, you know, have you have you noticed, uh, John? I, I mean, you're new to the game here with the journal, but Janet, uh, we're back in full swing. Uh, COVID is uh, is not in the way of anything with everything that's going on. You know, it's just amazing. It, it is. It's yeah. uh, refreshing, yeah. and yet we still need to be vigilant yeah. when we're in crowds, yeah. you know. Uh, still, people are getting it, but it, it's great that it's uh, something that's not holding us back from living. Yep. Right, mm-hmm. and you know, the whole thing was it was about learning to live with it, so yeah. we're moving on. And, and, and we'll, I go there because right there on the front page... Uh, the picture of the Main Street in Falls Village, the car show, Patrick Sullivan's picture. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we haven't seen that for two years, and this is probably even a bigger crowd than before COVID. Yes, there were uh, hordes of people on, you know, Falls Village's main drag. There were at least 550 vehicles registered for uh, for being in the show and another 30 that sort of got red, unregistered but got there. And um, they just lined Main Street all the way down the hill to, you know, on Railroad Street. And, yeah, I, yeah, they went uh, from, It was a lot of fun. It basically, the cars went almost basically from Route 7 uh, to... It was just amazing. Uh, and uh, they just know how to do it. It's a world-famous car show in, in one of the smallest towns you'll ever see. It really yeah. is. It really is. It's great to see they do. And things. what was so cool about it is it started as a small car show to benefit, you know, as an anniversary, yeah. and it just you yeah. took off. Yeah. Uh, now the next story there, which is a story that uh, any business uh, owner in this in this region uh, will find interest in, the great reshuffle. Jobs are back, but where are? The workers, uh, John uh, and Deb Alexander's story, uh, the first of a series about uh, the employment market in the Northwest uh, area. Yes, we started thinking about doing this uh, about a month or so ago, and Deborah Alexander has done a fabulous job of giving a first uh, glimpse of the problem uh, employers are facing, where they have jobs but they can't seem to find workers. Uh, some of the Anecdotal information is stunning. Uh, one one merchant in Norfolk uh, had 17 employees, uh, you know, not too long ago, about a year ago. Now he's down to six, and uh, he had to close one of his locations. And he used to interview 10 people a month, and he hasn't interviewed anybody in four months. Yeah. So what's really happening is that people are are uh, possibly triggered a little bit by COVID they are finding better opportunities. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of the shifting around is people are discovering ways to make more money by changing jobs or finding an easier way to balance their time and family uh, by getting a different job uh, or choosing when they want to put in their work hours. And that's, again, a pandemic-related uh, afterthought. So we really do have a lot of turnover in many sectors. and. Uh, it is, even though the unemployment rate is dropping and things are getting better, uh, I believe there statewide there are 110,000 job openings. Well, it's you know it's it's a problem that's going to have to be solved if we're, if the economy is ever going to recover. Uh, it's now not uncommon to go to a restaurant or go to a store and see a sign up closed because we couldn't get the shift employees to work. Uh, it's it's it, that's not an uncommon sight anymore, and as a retailer. Uh, my mother was a major retailer. Uh, she said, uh, you shut the doors, even if you shut the doors once, it's always hard to get those people back in those doors. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, this economy is going to have to recover, and people are going to have to want to get back to work, especially in the local area. Yeah. The other little tidbit in this story is that uh, all of these employers are facing an uptick in the uh, minimum wage, and then... Uh, some of the businesses are facing a new diesel tax that went into effect July 1st. There's, there's a lot out there. Well, there's a, a companion stories, one on the top uh, left-hand side of the page and one on the bottom 
right-hand side of the front page. First of all, the wastewater project in West Cornwall is approved. But second of all, uh, the Friends of Cornwall, um, and they probably did it very unaware, didn't really... Uh, uh, the town has filed a complaint against them, and the town's going to win this complaint uh, because uh, you can't, as a as a political committee, and a political committee doesn't mean running a just running a candidate. It means uh, you 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 can't do what they did, which is not identify themselves. And uh, but but th- it passed anyways. But uh, that story is far from over in in Cornwall. Yes, and I think the regulation is that. If you spend if you spend more than a thousand dollars on a on an initiative, you need to identify uh, the source of the funds, and if it's more than one person, that's another requirement. So I think uh, we'll see more from this, as you say. What's interesting about that is when I ran, uh, Johnny, you remember when I ran for the Board of Education, of uh, I spent $999, <laughs> but I, I still identified myself as the one who paid for the underwriting, but I, but, but I spent $999. So, you, you know, you have to be aware of those rules, and I'm sure they didn't, they didn't think politically and they didn't think about that. Uh, and they're going to have probably some sort of minor fine. But it's important to anybody out there. You can oppose things in your town. You can get together. You can form a committee. But if you're going to publicize it and you're going to spend money, you just have to identify yourself. Nothing wrong with opposition as long as you identify yourself. That's right. It's ironic that um, so much happens online now where, you know, people don't identify themselves and put all kinds of stuff out there. It's uh good to know that in the real world we still have these regulations. All right, so the wastewater project was approved. So we have a new uh, president for the Salisbury Forum, Pat Jenny. Yes, Pat Jenny um, has uh, taken the helm and uh, she sort of t- gives the journal uh, a bit of a glimpse of what, what she's got in mind. Uh, a little history, of course, is that uh, this is a volunteer Group uh, nonprofit with no staff, uh, so they work hard in in bringing great speakers here to the northwest corner. Um, they've they've beefed up their video uh, capabilities to be able to do speakers through live streaming, but they they still will continue to to have the the live in person speakers at Housatonic, at Hotchkiss, and at the Salisbury School, um, and they they want to really bring speakers here of global and local interest. And uh, so it's going to be another great year coming up uh, from the Salisbury Forum. All right. Uh, and I'm glad that the person in this accident and the police blotter is okay, but it brought me back to when Jimmy Carter was president. Uh, rabbit causes collision. Does anybody remember the wild rabbit uh, when Jimmy Carter was out there in the woods with the Secret Service agent that attacked them? Does, do you remember that, Janet? You know, it's ringing a bell now. I don't know that I thought of it when I saw this blotter item, however. So, boy, thanks, Marshall. But, I, it, just, yeah. it just it just rung a bell in my mind. Yeah, right. yeah. It's I don't know if the uh, state police blotter made reference to the well-being of the rabbit or not, but we did. Yes. It's unknown. Unknown. That's exactly right. All right, so now, now the spongy moth. Uh, making a leafy comeback after the spongy moth attacks. I'll tell you what, our trees between the emerald ash borer and the, and the state and the spongy moths, our trees have been taking a beating around here over the past couple of years. Yes, this is uh, just a catch-up to the stories we've been covering on the spongy moth attacks on all of our, our hardwoods. And uh, they, they are now, uh, as you probably can see around the... Uh, the northwest corner, they're laying their egg masses, getting ready for next year. But in the meantime, a lot of uh, releafing has occurred. And on hickories and white oaks, uh, white oaks a little slower. Um, but it's definitely uh, a good sign that we will have some greenery. Uh, it's unknown how long this will, uh, you know, be a, be a calamity for us, but we definitely have had it for two years. All right, Patrick Sullivan's story, signing up for food waste diversion. Yeah, this is a, uh, a story about uh, how really now easy it is to and simple to be able to store up your food scraps in between visits to the transfer station. And uh, the reason everybody wants to get food waste into the cycle is that it's heavy and, and it 
shipping it out of state for disposal is just costs a lot more money. So Patrick did a, a first-person story about how he went about getting his uh, receptacle, where he put it, how it's going to work for him. And uh, it's basically the bottom line is that it's, it's a simple process, composting. And once we uh, once again, we're going to revisit the story we talked about last week, and this has a big impact in our area because, of course, what we are going through with New Vance Health and uh, their transformation plan out of the Connecticut Mirror. Once again, the state denied that bid to end labor and delivery units at Wyndham Hospital, and uh, that has that had to shake up uh, the folks at New Vance uh, at New Vance Health. Well, this is a uh, another in a chapter of what's happening with rural hospitals. Uh, nationwide, but also here in Connecticut. And w- one of the uh, uh, interesting facts in this story is the, the Attorney General, William Tong, uh, sort of commented that asking parents to travel another 25 or 45 minutes to go undergo a major medical procedure is, uh, is, is sort of an extra burden. Uh, this, this story also points out that as you reduce uh, the number of uh, birth practices, uh, diminished access also, you know, adds to the obstetric outcomes, the, you know, bad ones. So anyway, we, we're following this because uh, it's uh, happening across the state as well as in our backyard. And uh, I want to move to the, uh, to the next uh, story, uh, which is uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, there'll be a two-pronged uh, session, a, a site tour, and then a session after that from the Salisbury Affordable Housing Plan uh, for that new affordable housing. That, this is coming up on Saturday morning. Yes, yeah, Saturday morning at 9, <clears throat> anybody interested can take a little tour of the proposed uh, plan, the site down on East Railroad Street in Salisbury. And following that at 11 o'clock, there will be uh, a second information session that will go over everything one more time before the July 28th vote. All of those those two sessions will be happening at the Salisbury Congregational Church, the parish hall. And a couple of interesting stories about animals. First of all, you've got uh, uh, Salisbury has uh, passed a ban on the feeding of bears, but also a great story and a picture on rescue donkeys in our area. Yes, I'm really sorry that this page couldn't be in color because the photograph of the donkeys playing with each other at the Trinity Re- Retreat Center in West Cornwall is uh, really a nice shot. It comes out pretty well in black and white, but uh, this is a story about uh, the Trinity Retreat Center that a few years ago got the idea of rescuing some donkeys. They were being uh, con- you know, destined for the kill pen because of their hides, and so they rescued them, and now uh, they are living the good life down there in West Cornwall. Uh, each donkey has a name and a personality. I personally know about donkeys because I own two donkeys. And uh, one of the things these do down there is they protect the chickens from predators. They're, they're very protective of uh, other, other uh, farm animals in their midst. Uh, I, I I never knew that we had rescue donkeys in our area. I think that's, 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 that's I, I I think it's a it's a great thing to point out. One of my favorite videos is on the on the internet is somebody coming to an empty field and calling the donkey's name, and for about twenty seconds before you see the donkey, you hear it, but he comes <laughs> the donkey comes running up to the fence. <laughs> it's just one of my favorite videos. Oh, well, Miles, I think you should do a whole radio show on donkeys sometime. Uh, well, some well, some people say that the show is hosted by a donkey, but... <laughs> <laughs> we want the names of those people. <laughs> All right. Um, candles, canoes, and director's chairs in Falls Village. Uh, it was a big weekend in Falls Village. Yes. Uh, you know, the not only the car show, but the, the big Discover weekend happened there, and... Uh, It was a steady stream of of browsers uh, coming and going, looking at furniture, you know, all kinds of of, uh, memorabilia, uh, artisans on sale, and there's a a little bit of an extra treatment on a a canoe that was uh, built. It only weighs 25 pounds. Its its skin is ballistic nylon, and it was built some years ago by by one of of, uh, this uh, Roger McKee's. Uh, Salisbury School students, uh, 
and had, had no place to store it, so he left it behind. But it was a fun day. And you've got the story about the, at the South Carolina Meeting House, once again, the talk on, on railroads and trains. Yes, our, our northwest corner, of course, is we had a story about trains last week, uh, another one this week. Uh, this is about Peter McLaughlin, who spent 40 years working for the railroads with his camera. And uh, it was a tour down memory lane uh, from the all about the Berkshire line. All right, we'll, we'll get to uh, a calendar and uh, more, but we'll go to the editorial page. First, Janet, your editorial, uh, news desserts, uh, let's keep our oasis going. Right, um, news deserts. And so we have been hearing about this stories nationwide of uh, local media closing down over the past several years. And in case we thought that things might have uh, uh, hit a plateau and slowed down for a while, that Associated Press has uh, done a study that reveals that there's uh, still newspapers are shutting down at a rate of two per week across the U.S. And um, really, uh, we have some statistics in here that are chilling as far as uh, knowing that local communities will be getting news of their area. So um, we, we talk about that, and uh, we are glad that uh, we have kind of an oasis here between you and uh, the Lakeville Journal and Millerton News, and we're glad to be able to remain here and to have the support of our readers, and we thank our readers for uh, keeping us going and um, being engaged enough to care about their local news. It's you know, it's just the way it is. I mean, you you have gone to nonprofit status. When I uh, decided to, along with Jill, when we decided to start a, a broadcasting company, we just looked around and said, you know what, um, this is the way to go, nonprofit, um, because uh, the scenery has changed so much, and it's important. We need the light that is focused on what goes on in our area. It doesn't matter that we're a small area. We're towns that are all joined together by the Region 1 school district and the state line. Uh, and you know what? We need the information about what goes on in these towns. Uh, not only the political information in the town meetings, but all the other things that happen as well. It's, uh, it's, you, you'll really miss it if it's ever gone, is right. what we'll say to people. Yeah, it, it builds community, yeah. and that's something that you can never get back once it disappears. Nope. Uh, once again, uh, you've got letters, uh, also a view from the edge from Peter Riva, uh, and uh, and lots and turning back the pages. Right, uh, Norma Bosworth has found some really interesting uh, pieces for us from 150 and 25 years ago. So look through those. Peter Riva has an open letter to the richest in the United States, and really, um, we're so fortunate to have Peter writing for us. He's in the Millerton News about every week, but we get to use him periodically in the Lakeville Journal, and we're glad when we can. We also have Lonnie Carter writing on Odessa and the Blitz, and a Chris Powell column on people praying over football, um, and uh, we're glad to have his view, too. All right. Now, of course, uh, you do have uh, all the information on uh, Railroad Days, which started yesterday and runs through Sunday. Right, the full schedule, so don't miss that. That's in the Lakeville Journal and, and Millerton. And Compass, uh, you go from uh, uh, Bastille Day to uh, uh, Jacob's Pillow and more, because once again, uh, the area has come alive again. It has, and so this is the day. Happy Bastille Day, the day the Bastille fell in Paris, and uh, worthy of note and celebration. Really good uh, preview of Jacob's Pillow Season from Jenny Hansel. We're so happy to have her do this for us every year. So read through that and make a plan of when to go up and see some wonderful dance. Um, we have works by Siegelman at uh, Argazi Art in Lakeville. Beautiful images. Um, don't miss that on Main Street in Lakeville. And we also have a 20-page tabloid compass section that... Um, you know, is our July section. It, it also talks about Railroad Days, streaming, um, different versions of a love story, which is the time traveler's wife. We're fortunate to have Sadie Light and Caitlin Lyle writing for us in this piece. Uh, Sadie was an intern last year, and Caitlin, a reporter, a, an intern first, and then a reporter at the Millerton News for five years, just left this week to go to uh, the Danbury News Times. We wish her all the best, but happy to have her still writing for Compass. 
uh, Cool Cars, uh, Sharon Playhouse Theater for Young Talent, lots in this compass section, including a tri-state calendar of, of the events, which, as you say, Marshall, suddenly we're seeing things that we haven't seen for two years back, and uh, let's get out there and enjoy them. And uh, I'll mention that uh, in that uh, special compass section, a terrific picture of the Wasaic Project, uh, the mill, uh, the children around it, uh, and more. That's just a, a terrific picture in color. It certainly is, and that's the joy of the Wasaic Project right there in the middle of Wasaic, New York, and uh, just welcomes in the community for all kinds of art um, exhibitions and interactive events. So, yeah, that's our cover. Uh, don't miss what's going on at the Wasaic Project this summer. All right, and uh, don't miss what's going on in, in the news and information. Uh, the Millerton News and the Lakeville Journal are available online at tricornernews.com. Uh, you can select on what paper you want to read, you want to subscribe to, or both of them. Uh, you can also, of, of course, pick up the paper uh, at various locations in our area and get home delivery. And to you people, when I post a story from the Lakeville Journal or Millerton News and you complain because there's a paywall, uh, don't complain. How would you like it if somebody just walked into your store and t- took something out and walked away with it? You know, that's a you, good analogy. You know, yeah. You know, if you, if you if you want journalism and you want coverage, uh, yeah, you have to chip in and pay for it. All right. There's a certain amount that's supplied for 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 free at at the site, uh, but uh, if you if you really want to be informed, you know what? It's got to be worth it. You got to pay for it. All right. Thanks. Otherwise, uh, you're all going to be sitting out here alone and just watching. Wondering where to go. That's exactly right. <laughs> Enough said about that, guys. We'll speak to you next week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take care. Uh, that is this week in the Lakeville Journal. Once again, uh, tricornernews.com is the website uh, and uh, home delivery. Uh, and uh, you can find locations throughout the tri state region. And you'll find it right on our on demand page, robinhoodradio.com. Click on on demand. Click on this week in the Lakeville Journal.